Welcome to Bleeding Blue. We are back. We are on YouTube. We are on the Talking Giants account. We are back on the podcast app. We are back for this offseason. Let's do it. Let's talk some Giants history. As a reminder, this is a Giants history podcast. And with me today, I have a good friend of mine, one of my best friends, I would say, um, Snacks. Hell yeah. Snacks. How are you doing? Really good. How are you doing? Good. It's great, it's great to be back. Good. I know. It's great to be back. Uh, a lot of people are now going to see me. First of all, they're, they're going to they're gonna see this. They're going to see this. This is what they're going to see. Well, are they going to see the sweatshirt? Yeah, they're going to see the sweatshirt. Um, that's, 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 that's the issue on my end. But they're also going to see how I am a Jersey Italian. However, I'm not Italian. I need to talk with my hands in order to have energy. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's ideal. It's how you're supposed to talk. It's how you're supposed to talk. We're from Jersey. Well, we are in person. May we not, are. May not always be in person, but snacks, great jacket. Thank you. You know, it is a Giants history podcast, so I figure, why not wear some history? Do you know where? Do you know when it's from? Uh, well, it was my grandfather's, and he's been dead for a while. So, seventies. Um, that was the best thing in the inheritance. I think it's eighties. Probably eighties. I think it's eighties. Yeah, it's old. It's old. Good. I haven't washed it in, since I got it. Tough. Like twenty years ago. Can't wash it. Can't wash it. So, what we're doing today? We are talking Giants history. NFC Championship. The mm. week, this is NFC Championship week in today's NFL. So I thought to kick off Bleeding Blue this offseason for the Giants, we're going to talk about winning Giants football, making it to the Super Bowl, the game before the Super Bowl. There's a total of five. We've won all five. We've won all five. We don't just get there. We win. Damn right. Damn right. So we're going to go in Quentin Tarantino order. Quentin Tarantino order is we're going to start at the end, go back to the beginning. I don't know... What Quentin Tarantino movie starts at the end and goes back to the beginning, but that's what we're gonna do. So snacks, 2012, yeah, 2011 season, correct. NFC Championship game, January 22nd, 2012, Candlestick Park. The New York Football Giants beat the San Francisco 49ers 20 to 17. They did 20 to 17, um, as two point dogs, two point underdogs. It was bad, bad weather, awful weather. It was rainy, rainy 52 degrees. 77% humidity, if you care about that. Wind, 15 miles an hour. Um, 45 and a half was the, was the uh, over-under. Yep. Under-hit. Under-hit, for sure. I think that's a theme in every single NFC Championship game. Yes. Including 2000? Which, you know, you could almost think that the Giants hit that on their own. But we'll get there. There's a common theme, and this is also what I want to start off with. There's a common theme between pretty much at least four of the NFC. Uh, no, all five. Fumbles is a common theme between four of them. Yeah, well, Definitely. Green Bay, not so much, yeah. No, there was a there was a key fumble in that game that I think a lot of people forget. It didn't really have an impact on the result of the game, but remember R.W. McCorders picked off Brett Favre in the back of the end zone in 07? Brett Favre had the most what-the-fuck throw. Yes, I, think of all time. I know, yep. It was first down. It's first and 10, and they were, driving in, they were driving into the end zone. Brett Favre throws up a, a, a WTF... Throw. He did a lot of those. He did a lot. But it was first and 10. Yeah. Um, Brett Favre was low-key the reason why they lost that game. Oh, we without a to, doubt. We need, we need to talk. We'll, we'll save that. We'll save that. But there's a theme. Insane defense. Yeah. I'm an offense guy. I'm an offense guy. I'm an uh, you know, uh, offensive league, blah, 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 blah. But why also, like, looking back at Giants history, it's because... The game was a lot different. So Listen, the Giants have always been built on defense. Wh- yes. Whichever way you want to cut it. You know, Phil Simms was a good quarterback. He was nothing spectacular. Eli was a good quarterback. He was nothing spectacular. They were not going to, you know, go. No- it's funny, Kerry Collins, the drunk that he was. Oh, oh I forgot. Oh, pe- people, oh, people, get, people, get, people, people don't get like that. that. No. People don't like when you, when you call Kerry Collins a drunk. Yeah. It's tough. I know. You had to apologize for that. You, so, all right, we had a segment last year that's what it, what does snacks have to apologize for? That's well, definitely. There you go. There's we know, number one. We know, Sorry, Kerry. We know what we're doing next week. Sorry, Kerry. Yeah, yeah, we have to bring that back. But no, it, it's funny because their defense was dominant. In that, we're we're going to get to it, but it's funny how Kerry Collins led offense was far and away yeah. the most high scoring game of all five. Because looking back on it, I'm more impressed with the Giants defense than I am the Giants offense. Correct. In, in oh, without a doubt. Yeah. So definitely in 87, 86, 87. You know, shutting out Washington, that was triumphant. But, you know, the weather played an impact in that game. Against San Fran, that's not, you know, only allowing one touchdown against Joe Montana and uh, killing him. He was just, de- they he killed yeah, him. They killed him. They, he was deceased. That, his it was soul, never the same after that. His soul was removed from his body that game. Yeah, um, it was. 
So Leonard Marshall did that triumphant defensive game. 2000 triumphant defensive game against oh, they were the, the Minnesota Vikings were two years removed from being the best offense ever. They were one of the best offenses in football that year. They were fifth and they were fifth in points scored that Dante year. Dante so, yeah. Culpepper, Randy Moss, Chris Carter. Yeah, that team was loaded. Zero points allowed. Zero. And obviously Packers and San, San Fran was a very talented team. So we're gonna kick it off they with were. that San Fran game. Um, like we said, bad weather. Giants were two point dogs. The under hit forty one and a half. Um, January twenty second. Vernon Davis kicks off the game with the. With I, the I, right, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you you brought that up right away because obviously it's the start of the game. That play happens. He's running up and down the sideline. Your first thought is, show me a replay. He's got to be out of bounds. You're praying and hoping. Yeah. No, and then you're thinking, well, this is going to be a long game. Seventy three that easy? Yeah. Boom. No big big explosive plays to start. Hurt and that was hurt. the and that was the only score that quarter. That was it. Bear Pasco gets another touchdown. Lawrence Tynes another field goal. Vernon Davis another touchdown. Um, this is kind of key. This Mario Manningham touchdown that starts the fourth quarter because Kyle Williams actually fumbles. Yes. Devin Thomas recovers it. Kyle Williams fumbled three times this game. You're going to hear about Kyle Williams in a little bit. Well, too. yeah. I, I I mean everybody knows what happened. Everybody knows what happened. Maybe not. Spo- spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. That was I a good. Get... That was a good move. You you put the foot on the mouse. To, yeah, this is that's that's professional. Podcast See my first move. rodeo, baby. <laughs> rodeo. South of Jefferson, it's rodeo. Mario Manningham, the first touch on the fourth quarter. I forgot about that. Kyle Williams fumble. Mm-hmm. Kyle Williams fumbled the ball. So did I until you, you told me. Devin Thomas picked it up. Tried to return it back for a touchdown. He can't do that. Yep. So then it led to Mario Manningham's only catch that game. Which he had an insane postseason, two thousand. He did, man. He, he, I mean, we all know about the Super Bowl catch, but that mm-hmm. that wasn't even just that. No, the whole playoffs, he was phenomenal. Yeah, he, he went he went off. Uh, I feel like you know, obviously, we remember Hakeem Nix from Atlanta Falcons. Yes, and even though even in Green Bay too, even the in, divisional even in game. Green Bay too, I don't remember any specific play though. I think he had a, he definitely had a the Hail Mary. Catch. He had a touchdown catch. The Hail Mary. That was Nix that caught that. Oh yes, you're on. Wow. Okay, you were talking. You're about, bad. You're off. You tell you said, uh, yeah, you're right. No, I'm not off. You're off. Hakeem Nix was really good. He was underrated that postseason. He only had one catch, but that play and Kyle Williams fumbling the first time, that's what kind of flipped the script. Flipped the script because then it was, what was it? It was 17 14 Giants. Yeah. They were winning. And I did not remember that. No, I know. I, when you think about it now, when, when he picks the ball up and tries to score, you're freaking out. Right. Like, holy shit. Yeah. This game's gonna be over, right? I don't know if it, is it because he called a fair catch. Don't know what the rule is. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know either. But don't know what the rules. whatever the whatever the case is, but that changed the game because then it was followed by David Akers field goal, tied it overtime. Lawrence Speaking Stein. of David Akers, we could just could never get rid of that guy, huh? No, it's crazy. No, all those years in Philly, he had a, he had a big like sixty yarder in Philly. Yeah, I, he also did miss if, one in two thousand two. Right, so here's the thing: you have a you have a you have a list, and it's called um, if I saw them in person. I would spit in their yes, face. Yes, correct. You have that list. David Akers is on my spit list. He broke my heart as a child. There was a 60-yarder field goal that Philly needed to hit to win mid-2000s, late-2000s. Fucking did it. Killed me. And he was just such a douchebag-looking guy. Yeah. Short. Not and... an attractive man. Didn't he, didn't he have a stash going on yeah, at one point? Yeah, he did. He had a stash at one point. I hated David Akers. Talk about Eli. What do you? What can we say about Eli? Talk about Eli. They threw fifty eight passes. He was buried. He was sacked six times, which I think we'll talk about in a minute too. Mm-hmm. Um, he just beaten and battered all game. But for that year, MVP of the season to me, and or at least should have got a little bit more recognition for they, it. They win eleven games. Now here's the thing: Aaron Rodgers went off. That's that's the thing. And they were fifteen and one. Aaron Rodgers went off during the regular season. Giants win eleven games. Eli Manning gets a little bit more MVP votes. If Eli Manning's not the quarterback of that team, they don't win a game. No. That team sucked. No. They got hot at the right time. But either way, it, during the game, he got absolutely annihilated. Every single time he dropped back, it was like he was in the ground. He had the uh, the visual of, of the shoulder pads off, or mm-hmm. the, the jersey off the shoulder pad, the grass in his helmet. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece up. Yep, yeah, he's calling timeout. What a tough son of a bitch. That whole game. 58 passes? Yeah. That's a ton for a team that, I mean... Obviously, they couldn't run the ball all year, but in a game they only scored twenty points. They throw fifty eight passes, absurd. I don't know how not one turnover either. I don't know how the Giants were only two point underdogs. Oh, well, they should have been more. Think about how talented that Forty Nine er team was. Ridiculous. That defense was unbelievable. Justin, Patrick Willis, Bowman, Justin Smith, Justin Smith. Wasn't Alden Smith on the team? Alden Smith was on the team. <laughs> 
insane. Ridiculous. That was a insane. ridiculous yeah. 49er defense. And I yeah, that's a good question. Two points? Two points. So you big, know big Giants believers. Vegas. Ve- Vegas Vegas gives three points to the home team right off the rip. Yes. So they're saying on a neutral field the Giants would have been minus one favorite. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. Which is unbelievably hard to believe. So my shithead. So this is what this is how we're gonna do it. Oh yes. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna give a game ball. This is what we did for Bleeding Blue before it was a Giants history yeah, podcast. You, yeah. David Powis and I, we would give a game ball, and then we would give our giant shithead of the week. So my giant shithead of the week is the offensive line. Entire offensive line. Fair enough. Sack six times. However, we wouldn't it, should we should we give more credit to the offensive line because they allowed the triumphant performance of Eli Manning? Should Fuck we no. do that? No. no. No, they're assholes. No. David Boss, I don't... Ah, sorry. Oh, you remember that scumbag? Sorry. Oh, my when you, God. When you... I think he's the last player in NFL history to ever wear the single bar face mask. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Single bar face mask. All right, who's your giant shithead? My giant shithead is Zach Diossi. Wow. Yeah. Only reason... Um, he tried to snap the game away in overtime. It took a miraculous catch and hold by Steve Weatherford for times to get that game-winning field goal up. Almost forgot about this. That was an awful, awful snap. Almost forgot about this, though. Yeah. One of my favorite moments. Pro- probably top three, top five favorite. he rips favorite, the helmet off giant and he's screaming it. We're, I don't... I, I tried to rip lead, r- lip read it so many times. I think he says... We're going to the motherfucking Super Bowl. I think he says, it? I'm. I'm going. I'm going to the motherfucking Super Bowl. Man, what a moment. Yeah, that was great. And I don't like Steve Weatherford. Wait. It, <laughs> I don't like I, him. I don't I, like him because how in shape he is. Well, that, well, yeah, good for him. I just think he's very annoying on social media. <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I don't follow him. You, you count your blessings. Did you ever eviscerate him online? No, never. No. No? It was, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to talk about the 07 Super Bowl, but unsung hero in that game. Yeah. He pinned the Patriots back all day. Excuse me. It was, uh, what, what are you talking about? 07 Super Bowl? Uh, 11, 11. Oh, my God. Relax. That's, that's twice. You have one more strike until you're off. Oh, relax. They're both against the Patriots. Jeff Fiegels is 07. You know what the fuck I'm talking you, you, about. You, you have one more strike left. Um, uh, Giants shit at Giants offensive line. Um, my game ball goes to Victor Cruz. Unsung hero. Victor yeah. Cruz. A um, lot of catches. He had 120 yards just in the first half. Had a, Had about 140 Total, so he had a 20 yards in the second half, second half. Everybody remembers the Plaxico Burris performance in the NFC Championship game in 07. Correct. Not enough people remember the performance that Victor Cruz gave. Because really, I'm thinking of one particular drive, and it was in the first half. Or no, two particular drives. The reason why the Giants put up 10 points in the first half is because of Victor Cruz. Every single ball that he caught, he was moving the chains. Yep. Put the Giants in the red zone. Utilize the middle of the field. Utilize them on the sideline. I, w- I would have loved to see the next gen spray chart in terms of. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm getting. I'm, I'm good. Get I'm the go- nerdiness out of the way. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get nerdy on this Giants history show where I, I wish I had access to this data. So I would have loved to see the next gen spray spray chart for Victor Cruz to see just how spread out he was and just how awesome he was. Yeah, so. no, he was phenomenal, and UI was finding him all first half, and I, I still have that image of him dropping the ball and like jumping up and pointing first down on the yep. sideline. You might, yep. oh yeah. Uh, No, he was phenomenal, so that's a good game ball. My game ball, Jaquan Williams. Uh, If you guys remember correctly, he's the one in overtime. The Giants got the ball, and they punted, and Jaquan Williams punched the ball out of Kyle Williams' hand. Yes. And Devin Thomas jumped on on the recovery. So Jaquan Williams gets my game ball because without that, who knows? Maybe Sam Fran finds it, and they go kick a field goal. Justified that Kyle Williams got death threats after the game. Yes. Yeah. Would you, if if, this, if the shoe was on your foot, would you be eviscerating Kyle Williams? Absolutely. You would get kicked off I Twitter. mean, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I fucking, I, of course. Stuff. Death threats are a little, they're not, that's not up my alley. I don't do death threats. I, spitting on somebody's face in today's that world. That is not is, a death threat. Well, Corolla, you have Corolla issues happening. I might could own. could be could be. I threatened here. Here's also I threatened to punch the Jets in the in the throat, and I got kicked off Twitter for twelve hours. Yeah, I didn't. That's that's not anything bad. I'm pretty sure I just told Steve Cohen to shut the fuck up, and I got kicked off. You can't physically punch a jet in its throat. They don't have throats. No, it's a plane. <laughs> yeah, it's a plane. Yeah. You want to move on to twenty? Uh, uh, 2008. 2008. 2008. 2007. The 2007 2008. season, yes. The greatest season in Giants history. 2008 NFC Championship game, January 20th, 2008. The New York Football Giants defeated the Green Bay Packers by a score of 23-7. to 
to 20. A lot of Lawrence Tynes field goals in the first and second quarter. Then Donald Driver puts up a 90-yard <sighs> um, ninety yard pass. Um, there's a common theme to Donald Driver catching his two touchdown passes. Brandon Jacobs put some scores on the board. He put a score on the board. And Juan Bradshaw also put a score late in the third quarter. Mason Crosby hits a field goal to tie it. Lawrence Tynes, miss, Lawrence Tynes misses some field goals, obviously. And then he goes out there. Lawrence Tynes hits a 47-yard field goal to send the football Giants to the Super Bowl two weeks later. Snacks, uh, the Giants were um, seven-and-a-half-point dogs. Big dogs, game. yeah. Um, 41 and a half. I think it was the same. I think it was the same. They were, they were both the same. Yeah. The same. 41 so, and a half. And they yep. both hit the under. Uh, oh, sorry, no, that went over. over. That went over. over. Yeah. I think they, this was a game that it was projecting bad weather. Like they knew this was going to be bad. It was one degree with a wind chill of minus 23. Yes. That's good to mention. Almost forgot. Unbel- Tom Coughlin's face was redder than my hair. Oh, here's, here's a funny story. So you see this book right here. Very good book. Um, very good book. If these, yeah. if these walls could talk by Ernie Palladino, we, we read that book, um, over the off season. And probably going to read it again. I would like to read it again. Maybe not everything. I'm going to select my favorite ones. We also didn't finish it. so That's true. I think we got up to chapter eight. Yeah, we did not finish it. So there's some good chapters that are left. A story that came from this book early in, somewhat early in the book, is Burris, Plaxico Burris, before the game, covered his entire body in Vaseline. Like, from, from head to toe. And think about how you put Vaseline on your lips. Yeah. You would not put, like... I have chapstick in my pocket. You would not put this like on your, no, I'm on good. your entire body. No, I'm good. So he did it that for his entire body, and he taped foot warmers. Look at my socks, by the way. Ah, Great nice. Great socks. Great socks. Um, taped foot warmers to his bare feet. Trainer Ronnie Bonds. Ronnie Bonds. Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie Bonds. I, I got to work on my Dave. I, I, have about a, I have about a total of a minute and a half worth of sound bites and sound drops of Dave Guttman's press conference. Don't talk about him. It's true. It's the Giants History Podcast. Um, he is a big part of Giants History, though. Head trainer Ronnie Bonds says, you're going to burn, like your feet are going to burn. But then Burris turned to him and said, that's what I need. Let him burn. And Amani Toomer commented, breathing in air would burn your lungs. So the stories of what some guys had to do, I think they even put like sheep Sheep fur inside their helmets too. Yeah, I, um, I don't know how you you play football in that. I mean, that, that's absurd. You know, you know. All right, we need to talk about this too. Is and like, the, 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 I'm sorry, the stadium was packed to capacity. Well, we know those fucking psychopaths in Green Bay. Well, they're all owners of the team, so yeah, they, they are. I would be there. I don't know if I would be there. Um, no, I would have been there. Is Eli Manning an asshole for expecting his wife to sit in the stands? Uh, no, I think he's a good husband. I think Abby's a shitty wife. Cause he, cause that was like his thing. Like you, you have to be in the stands. You've he's been not, in the stands. He's not superstitious. He's a little stitious. Yeah. And Abby always sat in the stands. She couldn't make it for that. She had to go in the press box. Oh, I, I don't Can blame you blame her? her? I oh, I don't blame her. Can't blame her. When you're that pretty, you have to be in the in the booth. Probably a good thing for Eli Manning, who you know may have as an NFL quarterback. I'm sure you know there there are so many things that are up to chance. You know. Evan Ingram. Oh. No. Ugh. Evan Ingram. Signed jersey, by the way. We're at a we're at your we're at your buddy Max's house, who's a good good friend of the program. Uh signed jersey, random he threw it at me when I got here. So um whether it's Evan Ingram dropping balls and you can't control it or anything else that you can't control as a NFL quarterback, you know, whether your left tackles Eric Flowers. Um that was probably a big moment for him to overcome that. Oh, uh, probably at that time the biggest in his career. Not even winning that game. That was that was huge. Yeah. Um, I, uh, again, to, real quick, the yes. Donald Driver, the ninety yard touchdown. Yes, that was Corey Webster in coverage, correct? It was mis mis coverage. Or Actually, this breakdown. This goes perfectly to my to my giant shithead. Giant shithead. I'm gonna. Yeah, I have it. James Butler. That's the motherfucker. James Butler. Um, I guarantee you, you can name me every single giant starter on that 07, 08 defense. And you would forget James Butler. No, I wouldn't. Jabril Wilson, thirty-seven. He was James Butler was number thirty-seven. I, I would, I would forget because you know Jabril Wilson, Sam Madison, Corey Webster, Aaron Ross. You remember all the other secondary guys, and I think the linebackers are obvious. Who was the third linebacker? Kavika Mitchell, Antonio Pierce. Who was the third one? Torbor, Reggie Torbor, Reggie, Reggie Torbor. Was he one of them? Yeah. Um, Signed with Miami that that off season. So then, obviously, you remember the defensive line. So, but forget. James Butler, he allowed those two touchdown passes. I watched, uh, I rewatched it, and he allowed the. Donald Driver, 90-yard play in the second quarter. 
because for whatever reason, it was beautiful, beautiful play design, by the way, by Green Yeah, Bay. it was. They did some like freaky fl- play action. Brett Favre was always awesome at selling it. Corey Webster falls down at the line of scrimmage. Didn't help. Yeah. Don't think he was, I don't think they were playing man though. Think they were playing zone. Donald Driver catches on the right sideline. Uh, Butler, there wasn't a soul there. Butler, well, Butler was playing the middle of the field. He like covered the tight end for whatever reason. He was not, he was the single high safety that play and he just, just chose not to cover the yeah. big part of the field. And that that's a play. They were up 6 nothing. the Giants. Yes. They were they up 6 were, nothing up. at the time. And then Donald Driver makes this 90-yard this ninety yard catch. And then you're thinking to yourself, well, it's almost like the Vernon Davis part. Here we go. Yeah. It's going to be a long game. Yeah. Just like that. He Packers also, are winning. He also allowed the, the, the second touchdown to Donald Driver, too. That, they ran right by him. Way to so, go, James Butler. He's my giant, he's my giant shithead. Who's your giant shithead? Piece of shit. Uh, my giant shithead. Yeah. I wanted to give it to Lawrence Tynes, but how can I? Cause you can either say, well, also here's my question. No, for you know you. what? I'm going to give it to Lawrence. No, Tynes. I, you know, it's good. That's, that's good. I'm glad you did because he, it was a, that he defied Coughlin. I know it, 2007 America's game. Coughlin tells a story where it's 47 yard field going overtime and he's going to punt. Yeah. They're going to punt. And Tynes just runs on the field. Coughlin doesn't say, like, go ahead, go out. No. He just Tynes runs just runs field. on the field. And Coughlin's saying, all the, the coaches are in, in the headset, coach, no, no, coach, yeah. don't do it, blah, 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 blah. I mean, luckily, Tynes went out there and kicked a rock through the goalpost, but I'm giving it to him because it should have never gotten overtime. Should have never, but also. Tynes should have made the field goes before. I know, I know, I know. But, but, that, but that move. Ballsy. That mo- yeah, it's it's BDE. Ballsy. BDE. Big dick energy. Big dick energy. Yeah. Because if he misses that, Green Bay's at the 50 yard line. Yeah. Or, you know, essentially right there. Brett Favre threw away that game, by the way. He did. Threw away the game. That's where my game ball goes to. You can give it to Brett Favre? <laughs> no, I should. <laughs> I should. No. Um, do we want to just jump into game yeah, balls? Game ball. You want to go? Go for, it. go for it. All right. So I gave it to Corey Webster uh, for, the, for the overtime interception against Brett Favre. And I gave it to him because, to me, Corey Webster is one of the most criminally underrated players over the last, like, 15 years. Number one draft pick, he was a he was a very good cornerback. Yeah. You didn't really have to wait. He, he was no... He was no Darrell Revis. No. Prime Darrell, but he was very solid. He stunk in 07, by the way. It did, it did that 07 postseason in particular. Later in the season and 07, I'm, luckily the Giants had depth at corner... Where Aaron Ross was, I think he was a nickel guy. He was a slot guy. Yeah, he was a rookie that year. I never yeah. thought Aaron Ross was that great. No, he way. never was. No. Um, but yeah, solid. The yeah. To, and then Sam Madison, I think that was that was free agent signing. It was, and he was towards the end of the he was towards the end older. of his career. I think yeah, it was great free agent signing because he it had was, Corey yeah. Webster, who a guy was um, on the bench, and you, and you can you know you saw from Patrick Graham this year. If you have a good defense coordinator, you can scheme around not having a good cornerback too. Right. But when Corey Webster kind of found himself and he was able to take over Sam Madison, um, you know, take it take it as you may. Um, you know, with PFF, he had, I think he still has a top five graded season, like his 09 season, top yeah. five graded ever for corner. Crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And like, I always appreciated Corey Webster. Yeah. I always did. Uh, I, I think he got a lot of flack for, you know, for different things. I get it. Like he was, he was whatever, but I liked Corey Webster. So I give him my game ball. It was between him, him and Plax. Uh, yeah. How Plax had like, I gave it a Plax. You gave it a Plax. So there you go. I'm glad he got one. Historic performance. Historic. Uh, in in a game. I'll never forget. Al Harris covering him. He's pointing to Green Bay sidelines. He can't cover me. Yeah. He can't cover me. And B- he couldn't. BDE. BDE. A lot of BDE. And by the way, Antonio Pierce, quick shout out to him. Because yeah. he was that phenomenal. Screenplay. That is one of the best football players I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. The, um, I think it was, what, um, was Mon Green. Still, no, this was. Um, no, Ryan Grant. Ryan Grant. Former Giant Grant. Former Giant, yeah. Former Giant practice squad. And, and the guy, the, Pierce was getting blocked and he stonewalled Ryan Grant with like one hand. Yeah. And that play would have been busted. So. Little momentum plays. I'm, I, I'm, I'm an analytics guy. I still believe in momentum. 100%. Oh, uh, without a doubt. That's Absolutely. A yeah. Play. That's a huge momentum play. Yep. Momentum play. But I so think I'm, Plax, glad, I'm glad Plax got it. Yeah. yeah. Plax, his catch rate was insane. Yeah. Like, you know, Victor Cruz, I think he had 10, 10 11 catches on 17 targets. Plax, I think, had one target that resulted in an incompletion. Nuts. In a game where the ball was a rock. Absolutely nuts. Insane. And uh, I, I just, because it always, Amani Toomer would uh, toe tap Amani. Yep. Great uh, on the play on the sidelines. So just a couple quick shout outs there. Absolutely. 2000. <laughs> 2000 NFC Championship. My game. favorite game ever. This is this is where 
How would how would you describe this game in terms of your your fandom? This is when it skyrocketed. Yeah, this was it. Well, television because this that was my first game. What your first game watching? First game attending. Attending. Wow, what a game! It was forty one nothing. Is this what it's like every game? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Essentially, I think my dad got tickets from work. Whatever the case, it was all the way up top. But either way, my first game going, it was ridiculous. Uh, the week before, uh, Jason Seahorn's interception. Yes, was. Was where I really lost. That was my Philly, mind. correct. That yeah. was Philly, um, but yeah, two thousand was my two thousand was my first game, Minnesota, and my goodness, could it have gone any better? No, no. January fourteenth, two thousand one, New York Football Giants defeated the Minnesota Vikings forty-one to zero. Um, one point dogs too. One point underdog. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Four forty-one and a half. Yeah, the under hit. <laughs> the under hit by a half a point. Oh can my you, god! Can you imagine betting? Like <laughs> Could you imagine betting the under and being a Giants fan? <laughs> like seriously, the Giants who scored—they just won forty-one nothing, and your under hits. So, <laughs> so you, so you said, does the home team? I'm not the biggest on betting. Home team automatically gets favored by three points. So yeah, so in it's like ninety percent of the time, unless it's like a huge discrepancy. Right. But home team, Vegas usually gives three points to the home team. Mm-hmm. Right off the rip. Like, right off the rip. So, if, like, the Giants are seven-point favorites on the road, they should be, like, ten-point favorites at Mm -hmm. home. So, yes. Minus one, they're kind of disrespectful to the Giants. They think they're about four points worse than than Minnesota that year. Yeah, I mean, we said earlier, though, I mean... You know, the I feel like the Giants got a bad rep in 2000. Because at one point, we talked... This is in Ernie Palladino, if these walls can talk... Jim Fossil's uh, rant about I'm shoving my cards to the middle. No nope. uh, chips. My, my chips to the middle of the table. If Excuse this is me. a poker game, I'm all in. So he and then he said we're going to run the table. Basically, promised we're going to run the table. Yeah, he goes, this team is going to the playoffs. This yeah. team is going to go to the playoffs, and I'm thinking to myself, they had a winning record at that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> why? Why was there like I know. this? Why I know. was there like this need? And good move by him, by the way, which he made some questionable coaching decisions. Like after this game, for example, remember how they rented out a movie theater? Oh yeah, they, yeah. They rented out. A we talked. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Giants uh, and Jim Fossil rented out a movie theater after they lost the Super Bowl to celebrate losing the Super Bowl. I guess you could say this. Se- well, how about we we'll rephrase it in, in, in the NFC Championship episode? They rented out a movie theater to celebrate beating the Minnesota Vikings forty-one to nothing. Um, Which is an all-time pathetic move. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I I, I like Jim. I he, like him. He lost he lost some some points in the organization after doing that. Without a doubt, yeah. You can't do that. They, imagine Tom definitely. Coughlin doing that. Shit. After one year, imagine Joe Judge doing that. Yeah. No. No way. No. I can't imagine what like Strahan and everybody felt. Yeah. So he so he said he's gonna shove his shove his chips in the middle of the table. Shove his chips in. If this is a poker game, I'm shoving my chips into the middle of the table. If you want in, get in. If you want out, get out. And the story this team is going to the playoffs. And the Sorry. story that I love um, that Ernie Acorsi told in the book, the week leading up to this game is that Ernie Acorsi went to John Fox, who was the defense coordinator at the time. Yeah, how about that? How, how does how does this? What sound? a great coaching staff! Can huh? you can you name even the head coach of the fifties and sixties teams that won all those Super Bowls? You can name the offense coordinator, and defense coordinator, Tom Landry, Vince Lombardi. You can name the you can name the offense coordinator, and defense coordinator of the Giants during that two thousand year. Yep, Jim Fox, Sean Payton. Um, so Ernie, of course, he couldn't even look at Jim Fox, Jim Fossil. J- no, I'm sorry. John um, Fox. John Fox. Well, you said Jim Fox. So I was like, all right, wait, <laughs> which one? <laughs> he couldn't even look at John Fox. Like, I can't even look at you this week. Yeah. I can't, I, cause he, his, his stomach, you know, his, he had a, like a pit in his stomach because of how nervous he was. John Fox said, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we shut him out. He said those words. Crazy. I said, I feel good. You don't have to worry. I wouldn't be surprised if we shut him out. And Ernie, of course, is like, are you fucking kidding me, you you dumbass? This is an all-time Minnesota Vikings offense. And Jim and I, what I love how Jim Fossil approached that game, he said, we're going to run the ball, we're going to run the ball, we're going to run the ball. Didn't run Kerry the ball. Collins threw the ball for three quarters straight. Threw it all over the team. Love it. All over it. Love it. And that game, honestly, there's really not much to talk about. It was just an utter, complete shit. Shit down. Not a shutdown, a shit down on Minnesota. Vikings had 78 passing yards. <laughs> 42 minutes they of weren't time. even close to scoring 42 minutes of time of possession for the Giants which I don't that has to be somewhat of, it has to be close to a record it's nuts for an NFC championship well think about it they got they got the opening possession they went down scored the ensuing kickoff Minnesota fumbled the Giants got it right there yeah it's one of those Man. things that you just know oh yeah oh, without a doubt it was it was over in a blink of an eye yeah um 
I'll, I'll start. Really, there's not much more to get into that. We don't no. want to spend too much time on just an onslaught. Uh, my shithead is Jim Fossil for not running the score up more. Mm. They didn't score one point in the fourth quarter. The, un- the under. <laughs> well, the yeah, under. maybe maybe Jim had the under. <laughs> maybe Jim had the under. He should have made a fucking statement and scored 60 on that team. I hope Al Michaels was calling that game. Oh, yeah. He was probably pissed. <laughs> Al Michaels don't bet unders, okay? <laughs> Al Michaels strictly bets overs. Gambling Al, love it. But no, Jim, Jim, there's no, you can't give a shithead to anybody here. Nobody on the team. So I give it to Jim Fossil for not running the score up more. My shithead's you. That's who I'm giving the shithead to. Well, that seems a little aggressive. What did I do? Yeah. Um, 1987, 19... Oh, I'm My sorry. game ball, Greg Camella. Great. Fullbacks need love. Wow. My, yeah. Good for you. My He was number 34. My mother's name was Camilla. Mm. Carmella. 1986-1987, Love you, Greg Camilla. 1986-1987, the New York Football Giants played the Washington Redskins. We're allowed to say that on this podcast. That's because true, because that's when it was. This is a historical... But why did you skip over 90? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to combine both. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, gotcha. Because this is a historical podcast, so we're allowed to say Redskins. Yes, we are. Redskins, we're Redskins, allowed. Redskins, Redskins. Oh, there you go. Um, Sorry. They won that game 17 to nothing. And 1987... Ni- I'm sorry, I keep on saying 1987, 1988. 1986-1987. 86-87, New York Football Giants played San Francisco 49ers in Candlestick Park. That game was away. Um, Giants against, I think they were seven-point underdogs. Um, I have right here. Eight points. Eight points. Eight points. This is 90? Yes. San Fran was 90. Yeah, San Fran was 90. What did I, I probably you, you, said. You switched it up. Yeah. yeah. Bad, see, That's bad, okay. Bad first episode. I'm, I'm, I'm This is it. not a bad first episode. Not we, a bad, we, I think this is going well. It's going very well. Leave if a we, like. If we can continue to do this, it's going to be great. Yeah, leave a like if you enjoy this. Um... So well, it's not over yet, so... Which which game was more of a snooze fest? Because 15-13 was San Fran, 17 <coughs> nothing. I have a very... I think 17 nothing. You think 17... I agree. Uh, against the Skins, yeah. I I, that's just... The, that was the win game, like... Yeah. Come let's on. Talk, let's talk about that game. Yeah, we, let's we talk about that game. We'll, we'll, that, yeah. we'll, we'll go ahead. Really, really out of order here. That's okay, fine. Fuck. Well, we, we, didn't, we didn't witness these games. So, we just go based on the tape and... and oh, boy. And some articles we read in Pro Football... Uh, pro reference. Fo- reference. So Bill Parcells had a quote before that game. Now it's it's Love controversial. Controversial. Yeah. You tweeted this out. The it's other day, in yeah. America's Game. It's in the America's Game documentary in 1986, 1987. Giants Super Bowl champs. But there has been controversy on Twitter thanks to Big Blue Henry Sean, who is a Giants history connoisseur. He says that it might have been a little later, but I don't know. I think I'm going to stick with it that it was before this game. Um, I think they asked Parcells, are you scared of, are you scared of the Redskins? Are you scared of Washington? Blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you what I'm scared of. I'm scared of spider snakes in the IRS. <laughs> it, no, I'm sorry. He, I, I it's should, so I funny. Do a little bit more of an impression. Let me tell you what I'm that, that's too much. That's too much. Yeah, he's got a little he's got a little he, he talks to those big big uh dentures he's got. He talk he he said it's slow. He said that's slow too. He's a, he was a slow talker during that during that one quote, at least he was a slow talker. Slow talk. Giants were seven point favorites mm. against Washington. Well, here's something that's interesting that happened the week before. Jim Burt murdered Joe Montana. Mm-hmm. So do you remember um, when when you're watching if you're at Giants games and you're watching the the hype the hype video that they play before the team runs out? Yep. There's two hits. There's two all time hits on Joe Man- Montana. One is by Jim Burt. Mm-hmm. White interior de- <laughs> defensive yeah. line. Yeah, yeah, okay. God bless. Yeah, <laughs> with an, I think he had a, like an offensive lineman number two, um, and then Leonard Marshall, Leonard Marshall. blindside. Mm-hmm. I think the Jim Burt hit is the bigger is the bigger hit. <sighs> it's know. it's the one where I'm, uh, it's the know. one where I'm sitting in my seat snacks and I'm I'm like I'm like this and then I go oh like yeah I, like, 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 like you feel it oh yeah you feel it yeah. oh yeah. Jim Burt's the one that I feel the Leonard most. Leonard Marshall f- pretzled Montana, though. Is it worse to get hit in the face, or is it worse to get hit behind your back and you're not know? I think, all right, it might be worse to get hit behind your back. Without a doubt. He didn't even see it coming. Yeah. I need to see how Montana reacted to getting hit by Burt. Yeah, I think he was, I think he was, like, compulsed on the floor after Marshall. Well, the, you saw how he didn't, he just didn't look right. Mm-hmm. He did, I think he stayed on the sideline for the rest of the game. Because, do you, love you, Leonard. Because the 
Barr hits the game-winning field goal yeah. at the end of regulation. Now, we're jumping all around for me. You know, but, but I think it's okay with these two because yeah. we don't know that much. We weren't alive, so we just know based on our, our, our parents, right. what they know, and what but we the, see on the But internet. the two comparisons of the two years is that during the Super Bowl runs, there were two all-time hits on Joe yeah. Montana. on Joe Montana. On Joe Montana. So, But Barr hits the game-winning field goal to end regulation in the fourth quarter, and you, sh- and you see Montana walking off the field. Barely. And that and that's huge. Barely, he he needed assistance walking off the field. Yeah. So first of all, is it's crazy that there was even a thought that he was going to go back in the game. Um, Steve Young only attempted one pass. My all time favorite quarterback. Twenty five yards. It went for. Now I don't exactly know when that happened. The injury happened, but you would think that if Mont or did they just not feel comfortable with Steve Young throwing the ball? Probably. I mean, he was young still, young. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no pun intended. No pun intended. No pun intended. Actually, a real quick point. Can I just bring it up? Yeah, please. Who are the two greatest quarterbacks of all time? Like that people say. Well, I don't want to say Peyton Manning. It's, no. Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Dan Marino. Okay, well, I was going to say Tom Brady, Joe Montana. In terms of Super Bowl success, But yes. what people say, like, they're the two best C- quarterbacks. success, yes. Right. Isn't it funny that... Oh, here we go. Am I wrong? You know exactly what I'm going to say. You're not wrong. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. We stopped that little girl twice, Tom Brady, mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl twice, and then we destroyed Joe Montana twice. It's true. We did. Destroyed. We ruined his career. I want to do... I wanna, he was never the same after that hit. I want to do a study. Not a study. I want to have an episode of Giants matchups with San Francisco because for those couple years... They were great. San Francisco... I can't imagine. San Francisco was more dominant than the Giants. Yes, they were. And just as someone who, you know, I I like the analytics, I like offense, the game has changed. Joe Montana and Bill Walsh evolved the game. They evolved the game together. Yeah. And to see how the Giants matched up with them over the years, that's something that I want to take an episode to look solely at that and see how that kind of evolved. That's a good idea. Bill Belichick versus Bill Walsh. I was just going to say, Bill Belichick, exactly. Yeah. That That was a great shot. Bill versus Bill. Great shot after Barr hit the game-winning field goal is Belichick. It's quick. Belichick and Parcells hugging each other. Wow. Damn. I still blame Par- I still have, I'm still salty about Parcells. All right, quick. Um, that should have been Belichick's job. All right, quick. Let's go back to Washington. Yes, sorry. Let's go back to Washington. We're going to wrap up. But yes. Game ball. Who gets the game ball? In Washington. In Washington. <sighs> Joe Morris. Yes. Joe Morris. Ram Wild. Love Joe Morris. Little biased too because I met Joe Morris, really nice guy, really short, yes, Re- really short. He, he got he gained a, he gained a little weight after his playing day. Oh yeah, he's a fat mama. <laughs> he gained yeah. a little weight. I have a picture. Maybe we can put it up. Me, my mother, and Joe Morris. Love that. And my mother was four eleven. Love that. Joe Morris was not much taller. I probably have a picture of Joe Morris too. Yeah. No, he uh, if I don't. he gets my game ball. Um, my game ball goes Sean Landetta. Ah. Six punts, 254 yards. Yards per punt, 42.3. Long, 46 yards. He single, I mean, really, in a game where offense was not was not a thing. Right. Was not a thing. You, um, need, you need to win the field position battle, and he, yeah. he made sure the Giants did. Yes. Also, not a nice person. He's. What do you mean? I met him once. It was terrible. He let me wear his two Super Bowl rings. You know what? You're 100% right. I am thinking of a completely different person. He let us wear his two rings, too. You're a fucking asshole. I swear to God. You know what? You need to. Uh, there's two things you need to apologize for. Now. Yeah, Sean, Sean Landetta. I'm sorry. He sat and ate dinner with us at this charity event when I had to see. He was a great guy. I'm really mad at you. Yeah. You, that, uh. Sean Landetta was the cause of, like, m- one of my best childhood memories. And you just, yeah. Letting, letting, having an NFL player let them, like, have, wear your Super Bowl rings. No, I know. That's insane. No, I know. I get it. You He's like a great way, guy. You like the way I pulled that off? Yeah, I do. <laughs> what the fuck am I thinking about? I don't know. Think of it next time in the apologize. Yeah, I will. I apologize will. next week. I will. I but will. in a game where S- Steve Cox, what a name, uh, punter for Washington, he was punting like yeah, 20 yard punts. Uh, Parcells also made some very deliberate strategies in terms of when Washington was going against the wind, when the, you know, when they were going against the wind with the wind behind their backs, it all just seemed to work out. Yeah. It all just seemed to work out. It, it seemed like, you know, when Parcells made that decision to kick the ball first, which at the time was that didn't happen. Yeah. Was not common practice. Right. And guess probably who guess who probably got kicking the ball first? Guess who Bill Bill Belichick got it from? Parcells? Probably Parcells. Because Belichick was doing it before everybody else. Also analytics says to do it. 
So maybe Bill Parcells looked in it. It's it's honestly the right move. Every time that a team does it, I just think they're stupid. So, um, who gets so, your game ball for uh, San Fran? Matt Barr, Leonard Marshall. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. Matt yep, yep. Matt Barr. Yeah, five, five field goals. Five field goals. The only points we scored. Got to give it to Matt Barr. Game ball. Leonard Marshall had two. My shit had is Otis Anderson. He had a 27 yard run, and that was um, it. on one attempt, and then 40 yards on 19 attempts. Um, that was uh. It was a bad game. That luckily, luckily okay. he was Super Bowl MVP like two weeks later. Yeah, I'm just going to give it to the offense for making Matt Barr's job more difficult. Jeff Hostetler had a his, had a very bad year. Yeah, he was not good. No. <laughs> like, you know that defense was single handedly the reason they won, and their defense and running game. Yeah, Phil Sims was setting. I think he, he was setting the world on fire. In the, I think it was four games before. Um, he, he, may, he may, I mean, I know he's a giant legend and all. We never got to watch him play, but he may be underappreciated. I think he's underappreciated, and I'm seeing some of, I, I was told from my father that, like, oh, he, Phil Sims was just, he wasn't that good. That my grandfather and my father always said the same thing. He was but just I never see, that good. I see these throws that he makes, mm-hmm. and I'm like, holy shit. They're good throws. And then look at the Super Bowl against the Broncos. Yeah. 25 at 28. He's immaculate. So maybe we maybe we give it real quick before we wrap up. Yeah. Uh, since we were talking about Parcells and we had some Coughlin talk, um, behind Joe Judge, who's better, Parcells or Coughlin? Behind Joe Judge. Behind Joe Judge. Man, it's tough, I, th- isn't I, I think it? I think Parcells set the precedent. He did, but does Parcells he... set the precedent because obviously I had this argument with my dad all the time, and obviously he goes Parcells. I say Coughlin. Obviously, maybe it's a bias thing because yes. I never really watched Parcells coach the Giants. Actually, I never did. But does he win without Belichick? But that's also part of being a good head coach is finding the right coordinators. Absolutely, I get it. Yeah, I get it. But he also kicked Belichick's ass too. Yeah, I know. Like Bel- I know. I don't think Belichick becomes... He also had Lawrence Taylor, too. Belichick doesn't become the coach that he is without With a, Bill Parcells kicking his ass. No way. So, no way, yeah. Well, the, the Parcells tree, I mean, it's pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty great. All that right. was a lot of fun. All right, that's uh, NFC Championship. That's, that's Typically, we're going to try to maybe make some episodes a little bit shorter. No, they, they will be short. That, that's five games we have to talk about. Yeah, five about. games. A lot of so, games. It's a lot. And the first one, maybe we figure go a little longer. A lot of fun. Um, thanks well, for watching. Um, if you enjoy on YouTube, leave the like, leave the comment. Uh, what was your favorite game? What was your? It's like Dora the Explorer. What was your favorite part of the trip? Um, and we will see you next week. Snacks, next week we are talking about the 86-87 Super Bowl yes. and the 07 and 08 Super Bowl. So what Correct. we're going to do... There's two weeks, you know, with the Pro Bowl, whatever that is this year, fucking Madden tournament. Um, there's Keep crying, be- Blake Martinez. Oh, yeah. Tough, Sorry. Tough. Had to get it out. I, yeah. I, 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 I hate him. Um, 07 08 Super Bowl, 86 87 next week. And then the week after that, the week actually of the Super Bowl, we will be talking the 90 91 um, 11 12 Super Bowl. So, yes. Two and two. I like how we broke it down because 86 is just like, that was so boring. They killed them. But 07 is. That's the one. Right. That's the one. Right. So that's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Keep on bleeding blue. We'll see you next week. Thank you, people.